One of the most enjoyable things I find when I travel is to explore local food, going into markets, small shops, discovering what locals eat, and having conversations through mind and taste, and discovering that people all over the world just want to share. I'd like to thank the crew and staff, particularly the tech and entertainment crew, who bring us all together. They do an amazing job. I'm Sharon Giroux. I'm a passionate traveler, a nomadic eater, and a lover of museums, art, and culture. I have an insatiable curiosity about food, food culture, food stories, and how food connects us all as human around the world and throughout history. Let's begin our little adventure together. Street food is a vital part of the culinary landscape in the world, offering a wide variety of dishes that reflect the diverse cultures and cuisines of the region. We're gonna delve into the cultural and historical significance of street food, including its role in daily life, popular dishes, and the influence of globalization. Welcome to food stalls, hawker stands, and food trucks. The global street food culture passes the message that we are bound together by one of the best things in life, food. A large part of the significance of street food culture is the ability to create a familial network within specific global communities, and that enhances levels of inclusivity. The liveliness of street food makes streets vibrant and daily routines colorful. It's an important part of daily life and it keeps pace with hectic lifestyles. It catches the attention of those from every social class, which breaks down barriers. And it's easily available at half the price or less than any restaurant food. Food stalls are often owned and handled by a family. This makes the business an opportunity for multiple generations in the present and into the future. Current generations are able to learn about where they've come from and where their country is going, culturally and socially. Resourceful but innovative, street foods have a long history, reflective of local and traditional cultures. Around 2.5 billion people eat street food around the world. It's one of the few things yet to be significantly touched by capitalistic influence. Of course, it all starts with fire. Preparing food with heat or fire is an activity quite unique to humans. Archeological evidence of cooking fires from at least 300,000 years ago exists, but some estimate that humans started cooking up to 2 million years ago. It probably started early on by simply tossing a raw hunk of something into the flames and watching it sizzle. Fire was likely a giant evolutionary step for mankind, providing us not only with tastier dinners, but with the extra nutrition and surplus energy necessary for generating our big brains. Back in the Paleolithic area, we were building primitive hearths in the form of a handful of stones in a circle. And for the next millennia, such hearths were the focal point of human homes. The word focus, meaning the point at which all things come together, comes from the Latin for fireplace. Until about 150 years ago, when the gas range came into common use, every household had a fireplace and every householder was obsessed with maintaining the kitchen fire. In the days before matches, if you didn't keep the home fire continually burning, chances were you couldn't start it up again easily. It's estimated that about 3 billion people worldwide still cook their meals over open fires, and some of those open fires are in food stalls, hawker stands, People sold ready-to-eat food since earliest civilizations. Ancient Greeks had street vendors that sold small fried fish, while the ancient Romans depended on street food for nutrition because they often didn't have ovens in their homes to prepare food. In ancient China, street food was also intended for the poor. 
but wealthy citizens would sometimes send their servants out to buy them some delicious street food. Street vendors of the 14th century in Egypt sold lamb kebabs, rice, and fritters. Even the Aztecs had vendors in their marketplaces that sold atoli, which is a gruel made from maize dough, and tamales with different kinds of meat already prepared. In North America, during the American colonial period, street food that was sold was tripe, oysters, roasted corn ears, fruits, and sweets. Europe had fried strips of potato sold on the streets of Paris in the 19th century, and they were the origin of French fries. Londoners could buy tripe, pea soup, pea pods in butter, whelk, prawns, and jellied eels. Today, street food is less local by type, and you can find cuisines characteristic for a country as well as food from the other side of the world. So let's do a little bit of exploring. Ancient Greco-Roman fast food joints were called thermopolia. A thermopolium was a place of refreshment, a type of snack bar where drinks and hot food were served and where it was possible to purchase ready to eat food. Pompeii had 150 of these food places before the town was wiped out by a volcanic eruption when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD. And that reflects a major demand for convenient eateries, especially in cities. Fast food eateries back then had a seedy reputation and they often served as spots where people could gamble and drink competitively. This is an example of a thermopolia found in Pompeii. The store's countertops were embedded with jars known as dolia, 